I mean, every animator likes to keep a notebook, that, you know, and in fact, uh, you know, uh, it's part of every visual tradition, really, um, whether it's um, pottery or illustration, painting, etc. It's always a good idea to uh, keep some kind of visual diary, and I think it's vital in animation. It's surprisingly not maybe as um, prevalent as it is in other disciplines. I know in fine art, there's, there's a long-standing tradition of the diary and the journal and, you know, documenting your process and so on and so forth and building these things up. I think animation tends to be quite industry-based and quite, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a communal effort. It's a, it's, it's a pipeline process, so you're fitting into part of that. Basically, the type of animation that I used for this piece was what's called puppet animation. Um, so you take a character and you break it down into its basic components, particularly the components that you want to move. So for example, this character here is a butcher and he's only required in one of the shots um, to wave effectively and turn his head. So I, for that character, I created just three separate pieces, the body, the head and an articulating arm, which can be reversed. So the benefit there and the benefit obviously of using a computer as opposed to the classical form of puppet animation, which would require that I redraw the hand, redraw the head, etc., in different, slightly different aspects, is no longer um, necessary. So it really speeds the process up. And for this, it's simply the head is reversed and he tracks as he tracks a vehicle with his eyes. And in fact, I have a very good example here of um, a very well known, very uh, great, in my opinion, possibly one of the greatest um, animators of all time. But you can see his process is is um, uh, breaks the character down into into different sections, and they're painted on acetate, which allows the entire entire um, a scene to be dropped or the character to be dropped on top of a scene. Um, it also allows, and I think it's in, it's worth noting, it's, it allows you to be very, very um, detailed in your character design, something which classical animation doesn't permit, classical 2D animation doesn't permit, because uh, you're required to replicate the image in every frame, so it must be simplified as much as possible, whereas um, the beauty and I suppose the charm of Yuri's work, Yuri Norstein, um, is that it's very, it's quite painterly. And so he's, he's he, I say he, his wife in fact was, was the primary artist. He was, he was only the animator, so he arranged the components. But, you know, fundamentally it allows the animator to, to be quite painterly in terms of how they work up a character. Her name is Francesca. It's unfortunate she, she has taken a backstage to him, which is, uh, in my opinion, a travesty. I think you know. It, uh, I, th I think in some ways it's it's kind of it's a it's a, a journey that people take from let's say education, training. The training process invariably there's a lot of freedom attached to it. You know, college, university, whatever, whatever, whatever um, initial training phase an animator is in, there is a lot of license um, to 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 create something different, and invariably moving from that. Uh, environment to industry it tends to change the nature of what people produce and it tends to, to change the um, I mean the the environment itself is is significantly different in the sense that there's funding there's there's various other kind of concerns um, that said I mean like I suppose to give like a perhaps a historical example the Czech animation industry is incredibly vibrant in the 80s, very, 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 very vibrant. There was dozens of, you know, well thought of, critically acclaimed animators, all working inside of it, like a, effectively a state structure, but highly subsidied. Um, and after the fall of the Iron Curtain, um, this government sponsorship evaporated. These people found themselves 
are basically jobless and see and the sole employment in areas like um, advertising, particularly advertising, or or in, in, indeed they migrated simply and they were they, you know kind of uh, absorbed into the American um, animation West Coast American model, um, or they they worked with European advertising companies. So so they went from being independent, relatively in, financially independent, to uh, fitting into the into the advertising model, and in a in a way, you could kind of argue, I suppose, that it was the commercial industry's gain because they had road tested a whole bunch of ideas and a whole bunch of techniques, and and in fact, you know, largely that is that is the that is the kind of irony you've got. You know, great studios like Goblands and Sheridan um, uh, State in Canada who produce very avant-garde, very kind of um, daring uh, animators and they get part their ideas get partially absorbed by by the production so so it's kind of it's like gleaning you know it's like um you know the likes of Pixar Disney Sony they they cherry pick and they glean ideas without maybe in some cases necessarily giving due credit so uh you know I think you know, and it, it's in a way. I mean, there's something. There are people who, who break break the mold, and they are they are they're kind of auteurs, you know, in a way, in the sense that they they've got full uh, creative control over every aspect. And it's rare. I mean, Norstein, for example. I mean, he interests me in a way because he's got he, his work demonstrates the result of the of of him being the author of of his own work in collaboration with his wife, actually. You know, working very closely together, and in terms of sound, also like a close relationship with their composer. Whereas, you know, invariably, like two hundred million dollar, three hundred million dollar productions that you see today, they're part of a vast pipeline which can contain thousands of individuals and indeed hundreds of animators. So it's. It's all it's all kind of overseen by a director who I think you know the the film process is just naturally it tends to kind of be overseen by production and and financing and these things are are, are critical um, in a way that the kind of cottage industry um, animators don't don't suffer from the same limitations in terms of creativity and and, and expression and even like you know going so far as to experiment with style you know experimentation I think that's I think that, that's maybe as important you know rather than let's say big idea concept stuff simply tweaking something or doing something different with light or doing something different with dialogue it's it's just not permissible like at a certain level I think that's why it's good to have um, it's good to have people out there who who've, who are working in a way that isn't you know, it isn't kind of you know dependent on the on the on the large scale kind of um, you know industry model. Um, I think it's the cheap. Yes, they did, but I I, I you know I, I put it. I think it's the wood is quite cheap, um, and it's just gotten cheap. I don't remember this being a problem fifteen years ago. Everything was better back then. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have the pain in my head then.